Sleeping Dogs is a game that surprisingly has no sleeping dogs in it or any dogs in it at all. But what it does have is some action, kung fu and hot Asian dudes. And also some hot chicks, but uh, we, we do, do not, not care. care. Sleeping Dogs is one of those games that resides in the whole of underrated games. It is almost certainly one of the most underrated games of all time and is overlooked by so many people. And well, that is exactly why I'm making this video, because Sleeping Dogs is one of my favorite open world action games out there. I really love this game. And for this video, I replayed Sleeping Dogs, with the purpose of seeing if it is worth playing in the year 2024. <laughs> The story of Sleeping Dogs is awesome. You play as a guy called Wei Shen, who is a dude that grew up on the mean streets of Hong Kong and due to that had a very rough past. But now he is a popo, but not just any popo, he is an undercover popo. And his mission is to bring down his son on Yi by infiltrating the gang, working his way up the ranks and gathering useful information to bring down the son on Yi. Yes, this is basically The Departed, except you are in Hong Kong. And no, the story is not a beat for beat recreation of The Departed in video game form. It is still unique in many ways. And I must say that the story overall is pretty great. It is a real good time and I really enjoy the story of this game, but that doesn't mean it's all perfect. For one, when it comes to the ludo-narrative dissonance of this game, the game is all over the place. There is a key moment in the story where Wei Shen has to prove himself to the Son of Yi by killing. And this is played off as a key moment in the story, except for the fact that right up until that point, he kind of already killed people. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, when it comes to the finishes with the hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Kung Fu, uh, you cannot tell me that some of these enemies are not dead. I mean, just look at this finisher. I'm sure that guy is absolutely toast. He is definitely not just taking a nap. And it is things like these where the story and the gameplay doesn't exactly mix together. The story desperately tries to create this dramatic moment, but it immediately falls flat when you think about that time you blended some dude's face in a fan. That is kind of a problem with this game story. And well, this constantly happens throughout this game story. You are meant to be playing as a cop and yet you are constantly doing these unethical things that a cop would definitely not do. Look, I've watched The Departed multiple times and I'm pretty sure Leonardo DiCaprio's character didn't go around mowing people down with his machine gun. But I understand that this is meant to be a game and well, the problem of the story is thinking too hard about things that happen in the story kind of makes the story a little bit stupid in certain places, but I don't think that that is enough to make the story bad. Understanding that this is a video game story makes it way better. After all, you can't just go around not killing people in these types of games. But nonetheless, there are still so many great moments in this game story and helps flesh out the story and actually makes it kind of good. But of course, the story is also helped out by some great characters. Wei Shen is a great main character. He is a great protagonist. The player really gets to connect and resonate with his struggles. You really feel for the dude going throughout the story of this game. You can feel his pain and you can only think of the emotions that he is going through with the situation he finds himself in. And when you mix these problems with his other character traits, I think it makes for a compelling protagonist. But of course, there's more, because the side characters in this game are pretty good as well. Winston, Jackie, Pendrew, they are all so compelling in their own way and they all add so much to the story. And so many of these characters are brought to life with some brilliant voice acting performances. Sure, not every performance is a masterpiece, but for all the main characters, the performances were absolutely fantastic. A game like GTA 5 has a more satirical story, but Sleeping Dog's story is way more grounded and more realistic. Sure, the story has some issues here and there, but I think that overall this is a story worth experiencing and a story that over 
overall is fantastic. The world of sleeping dogs is pretty nice. cool. The game takes place in Hong Kong, and I think they did an absolutely great job at bringing Hong Kong to life. The streets of Hong Kong are brought to life with its vibrant neon signs, its dense crowds and its PNG shops. Yes, the, a lot of these stores are just PNGs, which, uh, yeah, that, that doesn't look that great. But, but the rest of it, pretty good. And, yeah, the graphics doesn't exactly hold up that great. Sure, this is the definitive edition, which came out on a much later date and has some graphical improvements, but some of the character models are a little bit low poly and don't exactly look that great. But, uh, overall, it's fine. It's not that bad from a graphical point of view. Now, I also have to mention the levels of detail in this game, cause there is quite a bit of detail that the devs added to the game. For example, you can punch a pedestrian, you can kung fu the shiz out of them, and you can then stand back and wait, and an ambulance will arrive and start giving the kung fu victim some CPR. And I thought that's a pretty cool and neat detail that they added to the game. The thing is, if you play around in the world, you'll realize that they added quite a bit of detail like this in the world. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say I really appreciate appreciate this level of detail. Each district is also very clearly different from one another, and it is easy for the player to identify the upper class from the lower class areas. And I think the team did a great job at designing the environments and the buildings in each area to look so unique from one another. I think the game overall looks fantastic. The levels of detail in the world is a nice touch, and the Hong Kong setting is pretty unique. Now the missions in this game will seem very familiar, because it is basically exactly the same as the missions you will find in the GTA games. You go to a waypoint, cutscene happens and then you do some kind of task. Pretty simple and very straightforward. However, I would go as far as to say that Sleeping Dogs missions are better than those found in GTA 5, which sounds crazy. Now. Yes, GTA 5 has way more missions, it is a longer game, however in my opinion GTA 5 has some filler missions. The missions where you aren't really doing all that much, but in Sleeping Dogs that's not really the case. Every mission in this game is action packed, even the missions that seem mundane at first turn out to be pretty awesome, and, and that is something I need to highlight about this game's missions. It is action packed, and I really like it a lot just because of that fact. And these missions don't get stale or mundane after a while, because the game manages to change it up quite a lot. You are karate kicking a bunch of goons, you are playing bumper cards with the local traffic, you are robbing the Shaolin Temple, and now you are chasing some fool on a boat. You get my point. The missions are constantly changed up to keep it interesting. Now of course, this is also an open world game, and the open world is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's pretty decent. There are quite a lot of things that you can find within the world, and these things are pretty useful, and the game, and the game basically encourages you to find these things. Now how exactly does the game encourage you? Well, finding a lot of these things are important for upgrading your base stats. For example, each district has a set amount of shrines, and if you find all of them within the district, you'll get a health upgrade. And of course, there are much more that you can find within the world, and almost all of these things will help you in some way. The game is also populated with quite a lot of enemies, and a lot of these enemies themselves are doing some illegal activities, and given that you play as an undercover cop, you can bust them, like busting some drug deals or just, you know, kung fuing the shiz out of some of these enemies that are just, you know, uh, standing there. But I will say that a lot of the enemies that are just standing there, a lot of them are guarding some of these upgrades, which I think is also pretty cool. 
And in addition to all of this, there's quite a lot of side activities you can do. Now these side activities aren't exactly that great, they aren't really fantastic in any way or form, they're pretty simplistic, but I think it's kind of what you would expect from a game that came out in 2012. However, the game is kind of unique in this department. You are playing as a cop, and there are some activities that are related to the cop side of things, while others are related to the gangster side of things. And of course, each of these side activities, depending on the side it falls on, will give you XP for either the cop side or the gangster side. Overall, I think the world of sleeping dogs is pretty cool. It is engaging and there is quite a lot of activities that you can find within the world. And I must say, I personally do like this world more than I like that of GTA 5. Again, it might seem like I am dunking on GTA 5 in this video. I'm not. I do like GTA 5 more than this game but i do think that sleeping dogs has some more unique departments than that of gta 5 and i think it is worth pointing them out so yeah sleeping dogs world absolutely fantastic i love it Ooh boy the gameplay I love the gameplay in this game. It is absolutely amazing. And this is one of those games where basically everything you do has some sort of mini game attached to it. And I wish more games did something like this. But let's start at a point. Now there are two distinctive forms of combat in this game. You have the third person shooting combat and you have the hand to hand combat or the Kung Fu. I know Kung Fu. Now I will say that the third person combat in this game is pretty underwhelming in many ways but also pretty unique in some ways. At first it might seem like a regular third person cover shooter. But then you realize that this game really encourages the player to be more aggressive. And the way it does this is by having this unique uh, system to it. Basically if you jump over cover and you aim, the game will slow down time. Basically you get bullet time. Now once you enter bullet time, the more enemies you kill, the longer the bullet time will go on. And you realize that this bullet time is kind of important, because if you just stay in cover, well, the enemies in this game are pretty aggressive, and they will surround you and shoot you from all sides. So, the game definitely encourages you to use this bullet time element that it has. And again, if you ask me, I think this bullet time mechanic in this game really adds a different spin on the cover shooter mechanics, and overall I think that is a good thing. However, I do still think that the shooting itself doesn't really feel that great. And the only unique part of this game's third person combat is the fact that, well, the bullet time thing is really unique. But despite that, yeah, the third person combat is kind of just okay. But where this game's combat really shines is the Kung Fu. This game has a complete beat em up system within it. And the devs were definitely very confident with this Kung Fu system they implemented in this game because the first time you touch a gun is like four hours into the game and in my opinion this kung fu system is bloody awesome the kung fu system is very fleshed out there is a whole lot of abilities that you can unlock that all feels unique and is useful in its own ways and then of course there are the environmental kills which are crazy over the top and absolutely insane oh and they are pretty awesome the kung fu in this game is super awesome and I wish there were more games that implemented a combat system like this. And no, I'm not saying a beat em up system, I mean like an actual cool fighting style. Now let's move on to the way you upgrade new moves and abilities in this game. Now like I mentioned before, there is a gangster side of thing and there is a popo side of things. The gangster missions and side missions will give you XP in the gangster skill tree. And the popo missions and side missions will give you XP in the popo skill skill tree. Each of these skill trees have unique skills that you can upgrade and they are pretty useful. I think the one problem I have with the skill tree in this game is that the side missions give very little XP, kind of making them useless in many ways. I think the reason why you get so little XP is because there are so many that you can do, but I think it would have been more fun to actually complete them if they gave more XP. Now the way you unlock 
unlock some new moves in the Kung Fu system is by collecting these uh, ornaments for your Kung Fu master. You bring them back to them and then you get the ability to upgrade one of your Kung Fu abilities, which I think is again a pretty cool system. And I definitely think that the moves that you can get in the skill tree are very very useful and are very necessary, especially in the later parts of the game. I think overall that the combat system in this game is so fleshed out and kind of deep. It is a really good combat system that I enjoyed and it never gets boring throughout the 10 to 15 hours that this game has to offer. But of course there is more. There is also a kind of parkour system in this game. There are quite a lot of chases you will do on foot. And well the way the parkour system works in this game is that you basically have to press A on the right time. If you do this, Wei will properly jump over the obstacles. However, if you fail, he will kind of stumble and crash into these objects. The driving also has quite a lot of gameplay elements connected to it. First of all, each and every car in this game feels unique and different from one another when it comes to driving it. You also have this kind of bumper card system implemented into this game where you can basically bump into cars and take them out and then you have the ability to hijack cars where you can basically jump out from your car and jump onto another car and basically steal the car now simply driving around will give you these kind of mini games like nearly missing cars or driving clean for a certain amount of time you'll see a little window popping up in the side of your screen which will indicate your high scores <laughs> now these type of mini games are absolutely not necessary but having it makes the game way cooler and makes the more mundane things in the game actually feel cool and fun. The game also throws quite a lot of mini games at you throughout the course of the game. Hacking, lockpicking or tracking down an enemy all has its own unique mini game to it and I like that the game constantly changes it up because it makes each and every mini game feel fresh and engaging. Overall the gameplay of Sleeping Dogs is absolutely amazing. The combat is fantastic and all the other games gameplay components are so good and it all comes together to make a memorable and absolutely great gameplay experience. Sleeping Dogs in my opinion is a must play game. It is such a good game and so many people overlook this game. I would really love to see a sequel for this game. And hell if Dragon's Dogma can get a sequel like 12 years later, why the hell can't Sleeping Dogs? So when it comes to the question, should you play Sleeping Dogs in 2024? The answer is obviously yes, yeah, absolutely, you should play this game, it's so good and while there's still a lot of time before GTA 6 comes out and you already play the shares out of GTA 5, so why not play Sleeping Dogs, it's a great game, I promise you. Yeah. And that is it for this video, I thank you very much for watching, bye bye.